the hungry prophet. He went out of his home at an odd time of the day, at an odd time of the day or the night. So it was a time that the Prophet ﷺ typically would not come out of his home. So it can be assumed that it was between Dhuhr or Asr or it was sometime in the night and the Prophet ﷺ came out. When he walked out, he noticed two people sitting in the masjid, Abu Bakr and Umar. May Allah be pleased with them. Typically, this story would end up going in this direction. They then went and they worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they proceeded to some sort of expedition or some sort of place in Medina or to visit somebody because that's how it always was, right? The Prophet ﷺ, Abu Bakr and Umar. How many ahadith start off that way? The Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr and Umar, may Allah be pleased with them both. This one is different. The Prophet ﷺ comes out of his home at an odd time of the night and he notices Abu Bakr and Umar sitting there. And he says to them, مَا أَخْرَجَكُمَا مِنْ بُيُوتِكُمَا هَذِهِ السَّاعَةِ What is it that brought you out of your homes in this odd hour? They said, الجوع يا رسول الله Starvation, O Messenger of Allah. We're hungry. Hmm. We came out out of hunger. Abu Bakr and Umar, these are the three most important people in the Ummah. Think about that. And they're sitting in the masjid, and they said, the only thing that brought us out at this hour was الجوع. We're starving, hmm. we're hungry. Starving. And guess wow. what the Prophet says? وَأَنَا وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِي he said, and I too, by the one in whose hand is my soul, I only was brought out of my home because of that which brought you out of your home. The Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr and Umar were hungry. And they were coming out of their home at an odd time of the night because they were hungry. If you just stop and pause at that for a moment, the Prophet ﷺ, who had the most adoring set of followers of any man in history, who had the greatest generation present with him in the Sahaba of the Prophet Qarni, the greatest Ummah, the greatest generation of people, the greatest man with the two greatest men of the Ummah that were not Prophet, in the masjid, in a prominent place, because they didn't have anything to eat and they could not sleep because of their intense hunger. The man wow. who alayhi salatu wasalam, used to have people at his door all throughout the day and night, knocking and calling out to him, always making demands of him, about whom Allah revealed Surah Al-Hujurat. People calling upon the Prophet ﷺ, the Surah of the Hujurat, because they were calling upon the Prophet ﷺ throughout the day, throughout the night, and really harassing him. He was being harassed alayhi salatu wasalam. To listen to this person, listen to that person, do this and do that, and not being given his privacy, not being given his personal space alayhi salatu wasalam. And they were hungry. No one noticed that the Prophet وسلم, Abu Bakr and Umar were hungry. And this is a reality, by the way, that we have to understand that usually caretakers are never cared for. It's a part of our human psyche. No one thought to ask the Prophet وسلم, if he was hungry. No one thought to ask Abu Bakr or Umar if they were okay. The Prophet وسلم, who used to go out and would, if he noticed hunger in your face, think of the narrator of the hadith Abu Huraira, who once the Prophet just knew he was hungry by looking at him and took his hand and found him something to eat for the night. He knew it from your face. The Prophet who spent day and night in the service of the people, feeding the people, no one bothered to ask, Ya Rasulullah, are you hungry? His khuluq, his character was the Quran. You would think that these people are sufficed because of their ta'affuf, because of his modesty sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It never showed. He was smiling. He looked fine. The Prophet sallallahu never showed discontents with his companions. He never showed them that he was hungry. He never showed them that he was in need. In fact, the only time he did it sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was when Umar radiallahu anhu, one of the three hungry men at that time, walked up to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the battle of Ahzab in Al-Khandaq and pulled up his shirt and showed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that he had a stone tied to his stomach because of how hungry he was. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa pulled up his shirt and he had two stones tied to his. That's the only time he ever disclosed his situation alayhi salatu wa salam. Quran. He was a walking Quran. You know what? This is the implementation of La Nuridu Minkum Jaza and Wala Shukura. We feed you for the sake of Allah. We don't want anything from you. No thanks, no gratitude, no compensation. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and Umar, who were competing in serving the people in the obscure parts of Medina, were hungry. It's not an excuse for the Ummah. That doesn't mean the community got a free pass. Like, oh, okay, well, it's their fault. No, it's not their fault. People need to pay more attention. 
the volunteers, the caretakers, those who, who, who lead in whatever capacity, they also need to be cared for because if they're cared for, they can care for better. But out of their akhlaq, it didn't True. show. So these three men, subhanAllah, the Prophet Abu Bakr and Umar, all gathered together hungry. And so he is living his own example, alayhi salatu wasalam, and that's the peak of service and not having any expectation of the people. Far from living like a king, the Prophet ﷺ was living poorer than everyone else that he was serving. And he never complained to the people. Story continues. The Prophet ﷺ said to them, Qumu, get up and let's go find some food. The Prophet ﷺ, the greatest creation, the greatest human being ever alive, and Abu Bakr and Umar, the greatest two men of this ummah, walking around hoping that someone will find them and give them food. They come to the house of one Ansari man, and the Ansar were a generous group of people. And the woman of the house was there, and you imagine opening your door at this strange time of the night, and who's at your door? The Prophet ﷺ, Abu Bakr and Umar. Something must really be wrong. This is probably a death announcement. I mean, how does this happen where these three people show up at my house in the middle of the night? So she said, Marhaban wa ahlan. Like she was shocked. She welcomed them. Marhaban wa ahlan. Greetings to these amazing people. And the Prophet ﷺ greeted her back. And they asked her where her husband was. She said that he went out to fetch some water. He's a simple man. He's going out to fetch some fresh water for them to be able to drink for that night. But she invited them in to wait for the husband. The husband comes back home with, these canister, with this water and he sees these three men sitting in his living room. And he said, Alhamdulillah, all praises be to Allah who honored me with the most amazing guest. What privilege do I have to have these types of guests in my home? And so as he started to see them sitting there, he recognized their need. He gave them water and then he went out and he started to collect dates, a tum of all sorts of dates, ripe dates, dry dates. He starts bringing the dates and he starts hurrying up back to the Prophet ﷺ and to Abu Bakr and Umar, serving them dates with their water. And then, not only that, after he got them those dates, he takes his slaughtering knife and he goes and he grabs a sheep and he wants to slaughter and cook for them. And the Prophet ﷺ said, make sure it's not halub, make sure it's not a milk bearing sheep. And he knew his sheep, that he had his, his flock. So he slaughtered, he cooked, and then he served them that cooked meat. Prophet ﷺ, Abu Bakr and Umar sitting in your living room, eating water, dates, and some meat, probably for the first time in months. And at wow. that moment, as they're eating to their fill, the Prophet ﷺ, who does he look at? He looks at Abu Bakr and Umar. You don't get off because of this. He said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِي He said, look, we live this experience together. That's an unforgettable night. That's an experience that you don't forget. And these are companions. These are three men that deeply love each other. And he says, nafsi biyadi. I swear by him in whose hand is my soul, You will be asked about this night, about this blessing on the day of judgment. What got you out of your homes was hunger. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, But you are not returning to your homes without having been touched by the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You better be grateful for these blessings. SubhanAllah, it's unfathomable to think of the Prophet sallallahu as the hungry prophet. You think of the brave prophet, you think of the courageous prophet, you think of the eloquent prophet, you think of this, but the hungry prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, the orphan prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, the grieving widower alayhi salatu wasalam, the grieving parent alayhi salatu wasalam, and here, the hungry prophets, the hungry Abu Bakr, the hungry Umar, who in their lowest moments, this is an experience, this isn't, the Prophet ﷺ would go hungry often, in their lowest moments are still being reminded to say Alhamdulillah, because you will be asked about that blessing on the Day of Judgment. Now, hmm. to summarize, an attitude of gratitude here from the Shama'al of the Prophet ﷺ, from his description, the Prophet ﷺ was already expressing gratitude before that moment. He was expressing gratitude by not complaining of his situation and by still being a grateful servant to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, even as that situation was taking place. So it's not until he, it's not when he praised Allah after; it was his attitude before he got that na'im as well. Hmm. From the attitude of the Prophet ﷺ, from the Shama'al of the Prophet ﷺ, as Aisha radiAllahu anha said, he never found fault in anything that was given to him and he never criticized any food that was served to him. Any king, prime minister, leader, how would they act with their food? What about us? What about the Prophet He never once criticized the food that was given to him. Not once. He never criticized a gift that was given to him. Anything that was given to him, the Prophet showed gratitude. If he didn't like the food, he simply didn't eat it. But he would not, he wouldn't look down upon it or talk down the gift or whatever was served to him because that would be in gratitude, not just to the person who gave that gift or served that food, 
but to the one who provided that in the first place. He didn't, he wasn't inclined. There wasn't a slip up. The Prophet ﷺ never showed ingratitude for anything that was given to him or criticized it, whether he was in Mecca or whether he was in Medina. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she says that three hilals, three crescent moons, meaning three months would pass upon us. And the only meal we had in our homes were al-aswadan, the two black things, al-ma' wa tamar, water and dates. That's mm. all we would have. If you had water and dates in the place of a meal and someone asked you, did you have dinner? Would you say, yeah, I had dinner. Alhamdulillah, I had dates and water. You wouldn't even <laughs> say that. You wouldn't even call that a meal. The that snack. was the food of the Prophet yeah. Those were his meals. How do we get down to this? There's a practice. Allah challenges you and I. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا If you were to count the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would not be able to do so. If you took one blessing Allah gave you and tried to count the blessings within that blessing, you would fail, I would fail to be able to fully count those blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, always find something good to say about your situation. If people are complaining, find something good about the situation. If people are talking down something, talk it up. Always. Speak of the blessing of your Lord. Show that gratitude. Make sure that it's vocalized. Make sure that you're saying Alhamdulillah for what it is that's been provided to you. Try to pay attention to the things that others are not paying attention to. You know, you read all these websites on how to show gratitude. The first thing they say is a gratitude journal. Write it down. Allah already said it. Count your blessings. Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah would make it a point to actually sit there and count the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What can I be grateful for that I wasn't paying attention to today? Something that came very simple to me. Say Alhamdulillah for them. Always say something good about the situation that you are in. Find something to say good about that situation. Even if everyone or everything around you is pointing towards the bad of that situation. And the last thing, don't you ever feel entitled. We are not better than those people that are dying in the cold right now. We don't deserve it more than them. Our ahwal are a test for us. Our state is a test for us and their state is a test for us. But no one deserved the blessings of this world like the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr and Umar. May Allah be pleased with them. But they didn't feel entitled. It wasn't an entitlement. It wasn't the Prophet ﷺ saying, it's about time you recognized my hunger and that you did a better job. They were not entitled. Instead, they were always grateful. We should be questioning ourselves as to why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose us for the comfort that we are in right now. And the best way to thank Allah for a ni'mah is to use that ni'mah in a way that's pleasing to Him. Okay guys, so I do have to admit that when I just saw the title of this video, I was like, okay, well, it's no big deal. I guess the prophet was hungry. Everybody gets hungry. He's a human being, so he will just eat food. Also, knowing the fact that Prophet Muhammad used to fast quite often, it's natural that you'll be hungry if you're actually fasting. But this video brought in a whole different dimension that I was even thinking of. So these guys, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, Abu Bakr, Omar, these guys were dedicating their lives pretty much to helping humanity and serving people. And, you know, looking at that perspective, you'd think that, okay, well, these guys, well, one is a prophet and these uh, other men are highly esteemed, highly respected. Of course, they're going to get the best of services. But that wasn't actually the case. They went hungry and they were so hungry like it's like they couldn't take it anymore so they had to just leave their house they couldn't even sleep at night and thinking that like somebody like uh, prophet muhammad who left such an impact on on the planet was actually someone who was neglected in a way and it's as well, the speaker in this video was saying that it is sort of natural for humans to do that. Those who care for other people, they're usually not cared about in, a, in, the, same, in the same way. And uh, a modern example that I can relate it to is, let's say all those people who work as frontline workers, they work as nurses and doctors, and they're you know dealing with this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And regardless of what your beliefs are about COVID-19, the fact of the matter is people are still working. They're you know they're they're working long hours. They're tired. They're exhausted. They're not really getting any thanks or gratitude. They're the ones taking care of the people who are who are sick. And it's like, when does their payment come? Like, when does their gratitude come? It's kind of like that. I I, I related to in, in the in the circumstance of of uh, Prophet Muhammad. Nobody was even thinking of how is he doing? How are his companions doing? Do they have anything to eat? Do they have anywhere to sleep? Are, like, are, do they have any water to drink? It really does show. Like, yeah, uh, sometimes um, in life we 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 take 
people for granted, people's help for granted. And uh, we sometimes don't even say thank you, you know, when they do something nice for us. Also, another point I want to touch on is that uh, Prophet Muhammad, when he had the food made for him and his companions, he was grateful and he told his companions too, yeah, you got to be grateful because this is something that's going to be brought up on the day of judgment. And it's a huge reminder for every person, the importance of gratitude. There's literally sometimes we do actually don't get to experience more in this life because we're so ungrateful. And as the speaker said in this video, a lot of times uh, there, there are people teaching you how to be more grateful, how to show gratitude, and then they will suggest doing a gratitude journal. And that's actually something that I do uh, most days, anyways, usually Monday to Friday. Sometimes I don't do it on the weekend, sometimes I do. But I literally list down everything that I can think of in the moment that I'm grateful for. And it could be something as simple as I'm thankful for the taste buds that I have, that I can actually taste my food and enjoy it. And it could be something as big as like, hey, I'm thankful for the home that I live in, you know, thankful for the people in my life. And it's, you know, different things like that. And I, I do it. And, and I gotta say that it really does help. I've seen major, major changes uh, in my life. And, and, and just the feeling of life and the experience of life, it's so much richer when you show gratitude. So you, you can also learn that from a Prophet Muhammad. He showed gratitude even when he was given dates and water. And <laughs> that's a snack. But oftentimes that was what he had left or what he was given as a meal. Now, we sometimes, we complain. We're like, oh my God, I don't have enough to eat. You open the fridge, there's nothing in the fridge and it's actually packed and you're still saying there's nothing in the fridge. I Listen, I've been guilty of that too. So <laughs> I know what it's like, you know. Uh, so all in all, what to take away from this video is show gratitude and thankfulness to people, even if they're somebody who is in a position of giving care for others just ask maybe hey how are you doing hey do you need anything you know what can i do to help you because if you care for people who are showing care for others they can now care for more people or care for people in a better way the next thing is showing gratitude even if it's something small if somebody gives you a gift that you don't even like you don't have to use it but show gratitude because that person gave you something and just that appreciation there uh, can really make a big difference or um, you can give it to somebody else who may need it more than you uh, or you use it accept it you know just be be grateful show gratitude and also number three take time throughout your days guys to just count your blessings count all the things, all the benefits of life. And, and you'll be surprised how much your attitude changes. Literally, take a piece of paper or write it in your phone even. Uh, all the things that you can remember each day that you're gr grateful for. And again, it could be something as simple as me. I know maybe ridiculous for some people, but I'm actually thankful for the taste buds that I have in my mouth so I can actually enjoy and taste my food. Sometimes we don't even think about little things like that. Or it could be whatever it is. You know what you're grateful for. So th those are the three things that I took from it.